different studies. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to start out with a book by Anderson Gentile uh, and Buckley, Violent Video Game Effects on Children and Adolescents. This is from Oxford University Press. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, then we have a number of, of articles that we're going to talk about. Violent video games are popular with male and female children, adolescents, and adults. They have been successfully marketed to youth and are easily obtained regardless of age. Public attention and debate about violent video games has been one of the few positive outcomes of the horrendous spate of school shootings by boys with a history of playing violent video games. As early as 2000, the FBI included fascination with violent, uh, violence-filled entertainment as one of the warning signs of characteristic uh, of uh, signs characteristic of, of school shooters. The FBI report noted that the high-risk student spends an inordinate amount of time playing video games with violent themes and seems more interested in the violent uh, images than the game itself. On the internet, the student regularly searches for websites involving violence, weapons, and other disturbing subjects. A panel of experts on aggression and violence assembled by Surgeon General in 2003 found unequivocal evidence that media violence increases the likelihood of aggressive violent behavior in both immediate and long-term contexts. Video game researchers and manufacturers have often argued over the definition of human aggression. As a, as a behavior that is intended to harm another individual, or B, A, as a behavior that is intended to harm an, another individual, this, we're talking about human aggression here, B, the behavior is expected by the perpetrator to have some chance of actually harming that individual, and C, the perpetrator believes that the target individual is motivated to avoid the harm. The first study was done looking at uh, 1,619, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 161 9 to 12 year olds and 354 college students. Each participant was randomly assigned to play either a nonviolent children's game, two, ch uh, two children's games with happy music and cartoonish characters, and two violent uh, games aimed at teens. And one of the games was the Lemmings, cartoonish characters and silly music. Aggression was measured with a punishment task, blasting a person with an air horn. The researchers also gathered information about each participant's recent history of violent behavior, habitual video game, television, movie habits, whether they have a TV in their bedroom, and how much parental involvement there is with their gaming habits. This is another game called Captain Bumper. It's another game that they used. The researchers found that the participants who played the violent video games punished their opponents with significantly more high noise blasts than those who played the nonviolent video games. The researchers also found that, that uh, habitual exposure to violent media was positively associated with higher levels of recent violent behavior and that video games were more strongly related to violent behavior than television or movies. And Automatic was another game that they played. The researchers found that even cartoonish children's violent games seem to have the same short-term effect, on, on, uh, effect as the more graphic T-rated violent games. While people tend to believe that uh, an E everyone uh, rating means neutral themes, what seems to matter is if the game includes aggressive content and not how realistic or graphic the violence. And this is uh, Future Cop, LAPD was another game that they played. This is for teens only. Uh, this is for everyone. This is the automatic. This is aliens killing humans. Captain Bumper. And lemmings. And oh no, more lemmings. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I've never played the game. It's an everyone game. 
The researchers found that the number of intentional harm incidents in the teen games were the same as the children's violent games, though they were presented much lighter and jollier. The researchers found that just practicing being aggressive led to higher aggression after playing, even if the, the game violence was not graphic, gory, or realistic. And here's Street, War, Street Fighter 2 is another one of the violent games. The most important findings in this research was that brief exposure to children's games with violent content can cause an increase in aggression in a short-term context. The happy music, cute cartoonish characters, and non-human enemies characteristic of children's violent games do not eradicate the, the aggression, inducing potential uh, of these games, aggression-inducing uh, potential. And here's another ev uh, everyone game. It's uh, called Knockout City. The aggression-inducing potential of these games occurred in both the children and the college student population. The effects seemed only slightly larger for the younger than the older, older sample, the last kids on Earth and the staff of Doom, another violent game. T-rated Violent games did not produce a larger increase in the short-term aggression than did the violent children's games. The T-violent games yielded a slightly lower level of aggression than the children's violent games. And this is, of course, Fortnite. Age did not change the children's game violence effect. Neither did sex, habitual prior exposure to violent media, availability of video games in one's bedroom, or preference for violent video games. High parental involvement in media usage appeared to provide some protection against the children's game violence effect in this short-term context. These results are very similar to the adult involvement with children's media exposure, reducing the negative impact of media violence. In other words, uh, the more the uh, parents are involved with uh, what the children are doing as far as video games are concerned, the less impact the violence has on the child. In study two, violent attitudes, the researchers gave surveys to 189, 76 males and 113 females, high school students covering violent TV movies and video game exposure, attitudes toward violence, personality trait hostility, personality trait forgiveness, beliefs about how normal violence is, frequency of various ver verbally and physically aggressive behaviors. The researchers expected the adolescents who play a greater number of violent video games would hold more pro-violent attitudes, have more hostile personalities, be less forgiving, believe violence to be more typical, and behave more aggressively in their everyday lives. The researchers found that adolescents who play a greater number of violent video games hold more pro-violent attitudes, have more hostile personalities, are less forgiving, believe violence to be more typical, and behave more aggressively in their everyday lives. So they were correct. While the researchers expected other relevant variables such as being male and having, having an aggressive personality would account equally well for why some kids behave more aggressively, violent video games still made more of a difference than these other two variables. The researchers also, uh, were also surprised that there was no difference in the video game violence effect between boys and girls or adolescents with already aggressive attitudes. All groups, males, females, and previously aggressive individuals, were equally affected by the video game violence effect. It seems that no one is immune to the effects of, video, of uh, media violence exposure. The researchers also found that screen time, TV and video game combined, was a significant negative predictor of grades. The more time adolescents spend in front of a screen, the worse their school performance. The researchers also found that there was no difference between violent TV programming and violent video games as a negative effect of screen time. 
Forgiveness was negatively related to all three types of aggression. Participants who scored higher on trait forgiveness tended to report lower levels of aggression. The forgiveness-aggression link proved to be quite strong, surviving all the destructive tests with each of the three aggressive measures. Aggression measures. Researchers were trying to determine... This is, is the third study that they talked about. Researchers were trying to determine if uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders became more hostile with increased video game playing. 430 fourth, third, fourth, and fifth graders were surveyed along with their peers and their teachers. From the children, they measured their violent TV, movie, and video game exposure, whether they see the world in aggressive terms, whether they have been involved in physical fights this year. From the children's peers, they measured uh, which children were verbally aggressive, relationally aggressive, and physically aggressive, which children were positive and pro-social in their behaviors, which children they liked or disliked. From the teachers, the researchers surveyed the children's relational aggression, physical aggression, positive pro-social behavior, and school performance. The researchers expected to see that children who played a greater number of violent video games early in the school year would change to see the world as a more hostile place, and in turn would change to become more aggressive and less pro-social, which in turn would be related to, to them being more rejected by their peers. The researchers found that when a child played more violent video games early in the school year, they changed to see the world in a more aggressive way, and also changed to become more verbally and physically aggressive later in the school year. Higher aggression and lower pro-social behavior were in turn related to children being more rejected by their peers. The researchers were surprised to see measurable aggressive behavior changes in such a short time, on average about five months. The changes were noticed not only by the child's peers, but their teachers as well, especially since neither the teachers nor the peers are aware of what the aggressive child is doing when not at school. The researchers were surprised that there was no apparent difference between boys and girls, children who had high or low hostile uh, attribution biases, or children who already had or had not gotten in physical fights. Boys are traditionally thought of as already aggressive and more vulnerable to media violence effects, but all groups were equally affected. Amount of screen time affects school performance, but not aggressive behavior. Violent content of media affects aggressive behavior, but not school performance. In this study, the researchers found evidence that the relation between violent video game exposure and physically aggressive behavior may be stronger than the relation between t violent TV and movie exposure and physical aggression. So it's the violent video games, not the movies uh, and television. Okay, this is a study by Hummer, Kronberger, Wang, and Matthews. Uh, it's from two, uh, 2019. Decreased prefrontal activity during a cognitive inhibition task following violent video game play, a multi-week randomized trial. And it's out of Psychology of Popular Media Culture, 2019. There is a sub substantial evidence that exposure to violent media increases aggressive thoughts and behaviors, potentially due in part to alterations to inhibitory mechanisms mediated by prefrontal cort by the prefrontal cortex. Past research has demonstrated that playing a violent video game for short periods decreases subsequent prefrontal activity during inhibition, yet the impact of long-term gameplay is unclear. To assess how extensive video game play impa impacts brain activity, young adult males, uh, 49 males, age 18 to 29, with limited video game experience performed a go-no-go -no -go task during functional MRI for three consecutive weeks. Following a baseline scan, these men were randomly assigned to extensively play a violent video game or avoid all video game play during the su subsequent week. 
After one week, inhibition-related activity decreased in right inferior frontal gyrus and right cerebellum in the violent video game group. Compared to the control sample and self-reported executive functioning problems were higher. <clears throat> so they're having a problem making decisions. Violent video game participants assigned to the second week of gameplay had similarly reduced bilateral prefrontal activity during inhibition relative to the control group. Violent video game participants assigned to avoid gameplay or play a cognitive training game during the second week demonstrated similar overall changes from baseline as the control group. This experimental functional MRI investigation examined how increased play of a violent video game may alter brain activity. We present evidence that young adult males with low prior video game experience have reduced lateral prefrontal and cerebellum activity during cognitive inhibition after playing a violent video game extensively over a period of one week. In addition, bilateral prefrontal effects persisted after a second week of gameplay, though refraining from gameplay or playing a cognitive training game during this second week did not alter prefrontal activity. In other words, for the people that played the violent video games the first week, they had the same results in their prefrontal uh, activity as they did the first week. Lower prefrontal cortex function during inhibition is often associated with poor inhibitory control. For instance, lower prefrontal cortex activity or, or frontolimbic connectivity is present in clinical samples with inhibitory effect deficits such as ADHD. Oh, great. Violent video games are making people ADHD. Of course, we've seen that, that conclusion before. Dif diminished prefrontal activity with extensive violent video game play may suggest a reduced capability for in inhibition or at least a brain prime toward less top-down control. These changes can result in poorer regulation of emotion and behavior, particularly when physiological arousal is high, such as during an argument or physical alter altercation. In other words, if they get into an argument or they get into a physical altercation, they're going to become more violent. This reactive or impulsive aggression uh, occurs specifically as a result of provocation as opposed to premeditated aggression. Attention problems and compulsivity are distinct factors from hostile worldviews and aggressive traits and reactive aggression. Here's another study. This one's by Ting, uh, Ni, Guo, Zhang, Liu, and Bushman. And this is from 2019 as well. It's a longitudinal study of link between exposure to violent video games and aggression in Chinese adolescents, uh, the mediating role of moral disengagement. In research out of China, researchers used a large sample, 2,323 people, and assessed the relation between Overwatch players, in-game role preference, and their personality. Self-perceived in-game aggressive behavior correlated positively with aggression and dark personality, negatively with empathy and agreeableness. So the more aggressive you were in the game, uh, the more uh, or the more aggressive you were in the game, the darker your personality and the less em empathic and the less agreeable you were. Participants preferring attack, more aggressive characters, showed a more aggressive and less pro-social type of personality in comparison with those who preferred support, more pro-social characters. So what they were trying to determine was, who are these individuals uh, and what kind of characters are they taking? Uh, there is an idea out there that, uh, that uh, when you play a video game, you have an alter ego that is very different from your own, uh, from your own personality. Uh, but these guys were trying to determine if that is true. 
Um, this was only observed using self-report measure and not in a smaller sample with objective playtime measures. Uh, sorry about that. Overall, it appears that one's favored role in a video game relates to certain personality traits. The researchers focused on uh, in-game roles within a single video game known as Overwatch. This is something that we don't really see that much in the United States. Overwatch is a very popular game in Asia. Overwatch is a popular online class-based first-person shooter game. Each of the 24 heroes for Overwatch are part of, uh, of one out of four classes. There, and these are the four classes. The offense heroes are focused on dealing damage and taking down the enemy. The de defense uh, heroes stop the enemies from advancing. The tank heroes are highly resistant and are expected to take damage themselves to prevent harm to their teammates. And the supports are equipped to heal or improve allies, providing utility. A total of 2,411 volunteers were recruited online to participate in the survey. Of those, 86 failed to respond and two more reported playing Overwatch for more than 150 hours, 150 hours a week. They reported playing more than 150 hours a week. Let me th see. How many hours are there in a week? 24 times, uh, 24 times 7. What is that? It's only 160. Wait a minute. Is that right? There's only 168 hours in a week. How could they play 150 hours in a week? Participants in game statistics were obtained online with the help of their in-game ID. Data were accessible for only 1,871 participants. And of course, all 90% of these were male. The present research suggests that one's favored role in a video game relates to certain personality traits. When comparing Overwatch players on the basis of their favorite hero's class, we found that participants who preferred a less aggressive support hero were more empathic and agreeable and less aggressive with a less dark personality than those who favored a more aggressive offense hero. Self-perceived aggressive uh, in-game behavior also correlated positively with their trait aggression, and the dark tetrad, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and sad sadism and psycho psycho psychopathy, and negatively with empathy and agreeableness. So there are four different types of people that you can be. The more aggressive uh, those people were, the more likely the the more aggressive people were more likely to take an aggressive uh, hero. Looking at the concept of avatar identification, Yoon and Vargas in 2014 found that playing the same game as a villainous character yielded more antisocial behaviors when compared with playing a heroic figure. Mancini and Sibylla in 2017 found that participants based their avatar on their own personality with different types of profiles, uh, for example, actualized, idealized, alter ego, or negative hero, influencing players' identification to their, to their characters. And this is the uh, research that we were just talking about by Mancini and Sibylla. Offline personality and avatar construction, uh, discrepancy profiles and avatar identification in a sample of MMORPG players. Uh, multi online role playing games. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. Massively multiplayer online role playing game. Uh, this study examined the relationship between offline personality and avatar customization in massively multiplayer online role-playing games players and questioned whether the offline personality is always the starting point for the customization of an avatar. The aims were to analyze the discrepancy profiles which emerge when players are asked to rate their primary avatar, actual self, and uh, ideal self with respect to certain personality factors, to explore whether these profiles varied across personality factors and within players. 
and to analyze the relation between discrepancy profiles and the extent to which players identified with their avatars. A sample of 845 MMORPG players completed an online questionnaire consisting of a short version of the Big Five personality inventory and an avatar identification scale. Four discrepancy profiles, idealized, actualized, alter ego, and negative hero, common to the personality factors extroversion, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and emotional stability, and stable within players emerged. They converged into four kinds of offline personality, uh, avatar relationship differently related with avatar identification that was higher than av uh, when avatar was similar to self or an extension of self, and lower when avatar was other than self or an antithesis of self. So if somebody took uh, a, uh, an avatar that was not anything like their own personality, uh, there was less conversion taking place. They didn't really meld with the, uh, with the avatar. It's not like the uh, different personality of the avatar changed them. Kirkaburin, uh, jo uh, Jonathan, uh, and Griffiths in 2018. Uh, the dark tetrad traits and problematic online gaming. The mediating role of online gaming motives and moderating role play types. And this is from a journal called Personality and Individual Differences. Different personality traits are correlated with problematic internet use and online gaming. However, associations between dark personality traits and problematic online gaming have received less attention. The present study investigated direct and indirect associations of the dark te tetrad traits, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, narcissism, sadism. With problematic online gaming via online gaming motives, controlling for hours spent gaming among 421 on 21 online gaming. So are they, um, are these, what they're trying to find out is, are these uh, video games creating uh, people to display these personal, these negative, the, the dark tetrad uh, personality traits, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, narcissism, and sadism. Despite literature on personality pre uh, predictors of problematic online gaming, relationships between dark tetrad, per tetrad personality dimensions, for example, well, those are the four that we, oh, we keep talking about, the dark tetrad, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, narcissism, and sadism, and problematic online gaming have not been fully investigated, although one study suggested a positive association between narcissistic traits and problematic online gaming. Given the poor self-control, impulsive and aggressive nature of individuals scoring higher on dark tetrad traits, individuals with higher levels of dark personality traits may be more vulnerable to developing dependent online behaviors because they might self-select environments conducive to their social sexual goals. The dark triad personality comprises three overlapping undesirable and antisocial personality dimensions and has drawn increasing attention among researchers. Machiavellians are ambitious and self-centered individuals and are prone to deceive, manipulate, and exploit others to achieve their personal goals. Psychop psychopaths are high in manipulation, impulsivity, recklessness, and thrill-seeking uh, traits, and low in empathy, guilt, remorse, and anxiety. Narcissism refers to the traits such as grandiosity, superiority, dominance, and entitlement. Uh, so Machiavellianism, Machiavellianism and uh, psychopathy uh, are both have to do with violence. Narcissism uh, is kind of the same thing except without the violence. It has been suggested that the dark triad should be expanded to the dark tetrad by adding sadism. Sadism refers to humiliating, demonstrating cruel and deviant behaviors and or inflicting intentional pain on others to feel powerful or pleasure.
Dark tetrad traits correlate with offline socially undesirable outcomes, including interpersonal aggression and hedonistic values, which may translate into online behavior given personality traits as consistent across situations. Because dark tetrad traits are associated with problematic social media use and antisocial online behaviors, including cyberbullying, cyber trolling, and cyber stalking, it may be those high on these traits also demonstrate other problematic online behaviors. Grief play, for example, uh, trolling in online games, has been associated with all dimensions of dark tetrad traits. Now, grief play is, is, is a term that I have had not heard of until uh, I looked at this article. So you troll people online and give them grief while they're playing. Narcissistic gamers are more addicted to video games because of urges to be recognized and respected by others in games. Gamers with high narcissistic traits scores uh, value wealth and in-game power as they do in the real world, which may drive excessive gaming. Physical sadism is associated with the amount of violent video game play, which signals a potential risk for compulsive gaming because of increasing time spent on particular media leading to problematic use. It is well established that gamers' motivations to play online games may lead to problematic online gaming. Gamers who play to escape from real life, compete with others, and cope with problems have more problematic online gaming than those gaming for other motives. The compensatory internet use model asserts that individuals become problematic online users by compensating their unmet offline needs in online contexts. Gamers scoring high on dark tetrad traits may compensate their antisocial urges that they cannot fulfill in the real world in virtual environments, for example, gaming platforms. Empirically, online gaming motivates uh, motivates, I'm sorry, motives, empirically, online gaming motives mediate between psychiatric symptoms and problematic online gaming, especially escape competition and fantasy motives. The researchers expected similar mediating effects from escape, fantasy, and competition motives between dark tetrad uh, traits and problematic online gaming. Mediation analyses show narcissism was indirectly associated with problematic online gaming via online gaming motives of escape and fantasy among role-playing game players and the total sample. Sadism was directly associated with problematic online gaming among first-person shooter game players and indirectly with problematic online gaming via online gaming motives of escape and fantasy among role-playing game players and the total sample. The findings suggest that dark traits should also be taken into account when considering theoretical models involving, involving problematic gaming use, online gaming motives, and preference for different games. And that is the end. I guess the, the bottom line is you, you, you need to understand why they're playing these games. Uh, if you're doing, if you're counseling anybody that has a, a gaming addiction, one of the things you need to to determine is wh why are they playing? Are they playing to escape? Is there something that that uh, the game gives them that uh, the real world doesn't give them? Are they doing it just for fun, uh, or are they developing personality these negative dark traits, this dark tetrad? Are they developing these personality traits? Uh, and will they get worse if they uh, continue playing the violent video games? And this is one of the things that we need to determine. Now, we have seen, and we talked about this uh, earlier in the semester, we talked about the individuals that uh, became mass shooters, and some of them were playing these video games, and obviously were developing some of these dark tetrad uh, personality traits. So it's just something to think about. Um, uh, of course, what are we talking about? 
Uh, we're talking about 8.5 to 9% of uh, people that play video games are addicted to the games. Are they being a, uh, becoming addicted to the games because it gives them a personality, uh, a need uh, that, they, uh, that the real world uh, doesn't allow them to uh, demonstrate uh, a personality trait that uh, they are not allowed to demonstrate in the, in the real world. Just something to keep in mind, something to uh, to think about. So I'll talk to you next week. We have one more lecture, I believe. Next week is the last lecture.